In the past days, Sierraji has been speaking about how, how to make the dhammas good, which are needed in order for one to master oneself. If in the world the number of people who were able to master themselves, who are able to control themselves, would increase, if there were a lot of people who could do this, the world would be peaceful. Most people in the world um, cannot control themselves, cannot master themselves. And because of this, the world is seething, boiling hot. The Buddha spoke about the ways to master oneself. He taught the trainings of sila, morality, samadhi, concentration, and panya, wisdom. And he also spoke about what are our social responsibilities our responsibilities as humans. If individuals would develop the trainings of sila, samadhi, and panya and would perform their social responsibilities, then individually one would have a very peaceful world in one's own small world and one would bring peace to one's environment. And when there are people, uh, in this way one can create a small spot of peace in the world. And this is the way to world peace all over. So one must understand that in this life, it is whether one believes in past lives or not, in this life, it is very necessary to gain peace. And therefore, Sayadaji has been speaking about the ways to, um, how to develop this mastery of oneself and how to make these the controlling faculties, the ruling faculties, good, which are needed for self-mastery. And Sierraji has already spoken about six of these ways to make the ruling faculties strong. And today he will continue this topic with the seventh, which is Kaeja jivitecha anapekatan upatapeti upatapeti when one is working for one's own prosperity one's own welfare or for that of one's family this can't be gained easily one has to make uh, one has to try appropriately one has to work in or, and do what is necessary to bring this about. So when one is working to <clears throat> fulfill the trainings so that one can become a true human, it is even more necessary to apply, he- to apply effort. It's important to to make appropriate risks, to not be afraid to work wholeheartedly in the practice, just as one is, just as one works for one's own prosperity, putting out one, all one's effort, one should also do so, more so in the practice. People who have, uh, have been daring and taken appropriate risks in the practice, who have practiced wholeheartedly, there has been, uh, there has been no death by doing the practice in this way. There are a few people who died, and these are people who had disease to begin with. So today, Sierraji would like to talk about 
how to make effort without regard for one's life and limb in the practice. In the text, there are two words, apika and nirapika. And apika means to consider, consideration, and to take into consideration. And nirapaka means to be free, free of this consideration. One doesn't take any consideration. So one has consideration for oneself, for one's family, and one's family being dependent upon one. One, uh, one understands that if if one doesn't work, then they will suffer. They'll experience, they can uh, get into trouble, they can experience some danger because they depend on one. So if one doesn't do what one can to support them, then they suffer a loss. They won't have enough to eat or to, enough to, clothes to wear. They, their health may suffer. And so one works to help them. And this is the way of the world. This is, this one, one has interest in helping one's family in this way. And if one isn't, doesn't have some interest and consideration for one's family, those who depend on one, then one is failing in one's social responsibility. So in the world, this type of consideration should be. We should have this type of consideration and interest, but not to an extreme, selfish, demanding way. One should not uh, work with the attitude that I've got to get it. I've got to get it or else. That extremely selfish attitude. One should be inter- One should have an interest in working for one's family, but one should draw the line, because if one lets it go to an extreme, where where one is intent on getting something, then if one can't get that, one will experience sadness, and so one has to have some. Um, one has to have consideration for one's social responsibilities to the extent necessary. And in practice, we, in this practice, we are working to become truly human, to develop a humane mentality, and to develop special human knowledge In this work, we should not have any consideration for ourselves in this work. We shouldn't have any concern or consideration for pain we may encounter, or loss, or even our life. If we don't have this type of consideration, then we will be able to do the work. This is what is called kaye cha jivite cha anapekatang upatapeti. That is, this is the cause, this is what the Buddha said is a cause for making the ruling factors strong that bring us self mastery. The method of Satipatthana Bhavana, which Sayadawji and the yogis, all of us are practicing, is truly a method for extracting gold out of the trash. So in the world, people go to the trash heap and take some junk and they fix it and they sell it and they can make money. And 
If we let things just lie in the trash heap, then, of course, they become fertilizer. They become just uh, turn into earth. But if we take something out of the trash heap, we can fix it and we can use it. This body is no different than a rubbish heap. For example, try not bathing for a while. It'll start to smell bad. And the body won't look good either. In the body there are things like um, snot and spit and urine and feces. And when they come out, try not wiping them. What will happen? The body will become very disgusting. And so this body is not clean. It's in Pali, a suchi. It's not clean. And so although one wouldn't want to um, embrace a, a piece of rubbish, but one can make use of this one can make use of it. Although it is not elegant, this body, it is not clean, we can gain, we can extract what is worthwhile and essential from it. When we make our physical and verbal behavior clean, civilized, peaceful, and delightful with the training of sila, this is using the body to extract gold. And from here, after taking up the training of sila, one can continue and make the mind clean so that the mind doesn't want to kill or harm people. One can instill, insert in the mind the attitudes of loving kindness and compassion, wanting for others' welfare, having sympathy for them, and adding to this the joy when, when one sees another person successful. And then, on top of that, equanimity, the attitude that understands we all go according to our karma, and therefore despite our wants for another person to be well and happy, they have their kama. So one has to nurture these attitudes in the mind. And especially um, especially as, as now, we have to observe with every arising object, always guard the mind with vigilant mindfulness. Whether it's, whether it's kaya, vedana, chitta, or dhamma, matter, feeling, consciousness, or general objects, when they arise, one always should try to observe them. Should, one should always have sati. And following on sati, samadhi arises, the collectedness of mind. And when these become strong, then the mind becomes clean. And there won't be any desire to harm others. This is what we gain from our body, from using our body. And from here, we come to see the difference between nama and rupa, mind and matter. And we come to see how these are related as cause and effect. This is knowledge which we gain from our body. So, although we extract valuable things from it, there is no need to favor the body. We just have to gain the essence from it. Another way to think of it is as a corpse, a corpse with no life at all. So, we shouldn't have any consideration for it. 
Uh, we shouldn't be, a, uh, if, we, if we do have consideration for the body, we won't be willing to take risks in the practice. So we should not be afraid of death when we undertake the practice. We should consider that this having a life is like having an enemy. Because when we have life, in that lifetime we may do wrong things, that's one thing. And then in that lifetime we age, we get sick, we suffer, and we suffer things that make us feel sad. So because of life we have these, just like, just like an enemy, it, it creates all these problems for us. So if we don't have this life, if we don't have any new life, then we won't have the suffering that comes with each new lifetime. So while we are alive, we need to try to gain the essence from our life. And in doing this, we shouldn't have any consideration for our life just the same as we shouldn't have any consideration for an enemy. Those who fear death are not worthy of the Dhamma. They they won't be able to gain it. But in this practice, there have not been any deaths. In fact, people have overcome their diseases. So, therefore, the Buddha said, Kaya ca jivi de ca anapekatang upatapeti one has to have an attitude of having no consideration regarding one's body or one's life one has to be willing to take risks in the practice one should sit at least one hour without moving one should walk for one hour one should observe all other activities So when we do this, then there will be energy created, virya, to observe the object. And (coughs) following on virya, there will be sati, and then samadhi, concentration. And when these are good, one will begin to know, starting with nama and rupa, one one is sure to come to know stage by stage. If one reaches the stage of Uriyabhyanyana, kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, is very good. Moment after moment, it falls collectively on every arising object. And this, it falls collectively on every arising object without missing even on tiny, tiny objects. This is Kanika Samadhi. And when, it's, when the energy strength of this Kanika Samadhi becomes full, then vision, what one sees, becomes sharp and keen. This sharp, clean, clear vision is the, is the power of Samadhi. The object arises, and there's the knowing mind. And like, uh, like the way things are, something is being sliced segment by segment with a knife. So too, the object and the knowing mind, one by one, appear very, very clearly. This keen, sharp ability to see is due to samadhi, and it is called teka bhava. The nature of being sharp and keen. So when one sees the Dhamma, one tends to be, uh, one may be happy with that. And this happiness of what one sees, happiness with what one sees may make one miss a noting. So one has to observe as soon as that arises. 
otherwise the defilements can, can come in and make the mind unclean. So when one's what observation is connected moment by moment, then the dirt of the mind becomes distanced. And the mind becomes clear, just like water, when you have a glass of water that is muddy or dirty and you let it sit and as it's, when it sits the sediment drops down and the water is, itself becomes clear and clean. That is like the mind when it is free of defilements. So the mind first becomes clear and this is um, bright faith that one experiences. So then one sees, uh, for example, when one notes one thought, one sees many thoughts, one by one. One sees, one's vision becomes very, um, one sees many things instead of just one. And when, if one can observe, uh, without missing, then, then one's knowledge will become quick and clear. So the, first there is the bright faith where the mind becomes clear and then trusting faith which makes the knowledge become quick as well as clear. So when yogis have some good experience they have to be careful about this. They can't let themselves sit there and enjoy it because if they do, then the dirt will arise and the mind will become unclear again. So one has to be careful about this. Vision also progresses. Without virya, the yogis uh, just experience the same thing each day. There's just rising, falling, lifting, moving, placing, and when do, one doesn't have the courage to face discomfort, then one changes one's position. So it won't be easy to progress. One has to have courage to face difficulties. A hero is one who advances when difficulties are encountered. So if instead one views discomfort or sitting for a full hour as a big burden, then it will be hard to make progress in the practice. If one can't help it but has to avoid, has to meet up with an enemy, one can't avoid it. If one retreats, then the enemy will get the advantage and, and advance. So instead, one has to advance to meet the enemy. And one has to bear, uh, in terms of the practice, one has to bear discomfort with strength. So if one does this, one can overcome it. So This is what is meant by observing the arising object uh, without missing. One will come to be able to do that. So one has to apply effort, otherwise laziness will come in. And when lazy com laziness comes in, other kilesas will also come in, and one's courage will be weakened and one won't be brave enough to face difficulties. But if one faces the discomfort and the obstacles, one can overcome them, and one gains courage by this. One becomes bold, and because one's effort increases and becomes strong, knowledge progresses. To the extent that one's effort is good, then sati, samadhi, clarity of mind, and virya, 
virya become good. So when when the virya progresses and the power of, of virya is strong, then one's vision will progress. When samadhi is strong, then our knowledge becomes sharp and clean. When sati is strong, knowledge becomes firm and broad. When faith, sada, is strong, knowledge becomes <clears throat> clear and also agile. When virya is strong, knowledge will progress. So one will go from seeing nama and rupa to seeing how they are related as cause and effect. And then we'll, one will see how these just now they arise and then they disappear and one will come to see how many many things arise and pass away very quickly when one's noting can't keep up with the objects one, when one can't label them because they are so fast one can just watch them watch them one by one and so at this point the vision is very clear and this is not something that is impossible. It is what is described in the text, and it is also what yogis actually experience. And if you try, you can gain this. Because one makes effort courageously, wholeheartedly, daringly, one's vision becomes sharp and clean, sharp and keen. It becomes firm and broad. One's vision becomes clear and agile, and it progresses steadily. At this time, will there be any boredom? Will there be any laziness or wanting to take it easy? No, at this time, one's courage becomes very strong. And when that happens, one's knowledge becomes complete in a short time. If one has not um, come to this stage within a, more, a little bo more than a month, then it shows that one's effort is weak. One's faith is not there. One's faith is weak. So, those who want to become a true human, to develop a truly humane heart with better than average human knowledge, who want to gain mastery of themselves, Sayadawji urges all of you to try to do this in the remaining time. <laughs>